Hello YouTube, this is Corbett22 here, back with another 100 point squadron build for Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures. Uh, tonight's build is another 3 ship squadron for the Rebel Alliance slash Resistance. Uh, we have an A-Wing fighter piloted by Tycho Silchu, and we have an Incom T-65 X-Wing piloted by Derek Hobby Clivian, and then we have an Incom T-70 X-Wing piloted by Elo Asti. Now, like with the previous build, this uh, build this squadron emphasizes on stress and basically not giving a damn when it comes to stress. All three of these, um, all three of these ships have upgrades and abilities that help them cope with stress a lot easier. And basically, well, just flat out, you can basically just go nuts with your maneuvers and uh, with very little to no consequence. Uh, especially with Tycho because of his ability. I've, I've, you all probably all know Tycho by now. He's probably one of the best A-wing pilots in the field. It's very relatively cheap, and his ability is just overkill. So that said, let's look at the build we have going on here. So standard three-ship build. We got Hobby on the left, Tycho in the middle, Elo on the right. All the ships have been upgraded to their maximum potential, uh, coming up to a total squadron point cost of 100. So uh, unless the enemy has 100 points as well, you'll have to roll for initiative. Other than that, the Empire will, the uh, your opponent will always get initiative. We'll start here with the squadron leader of this of this year. That being Tycho Selchu. He comes in coming in at a pilot skill of eight. He flies the RZ-1 A-Wing Interceptor for the Rebel Alliance. He has the standard stats of an A-Wing fighter. He has an attack value of two, agility value of three, hull value of two, and a shield value of two. His action bar consists of the focus, target lock, boost, and evade actions. He costs 26 points to field. And his upgrade bar consists of an elite of an elite upgrade, a missile upgrade, and an unlisted Thailand modification. His ability reads, you may perform actions even while you have stress tokens. So Tycho just blatantly ignores stress. Like you can do a K turn 3, a K turn 5, run through a debris field, it doesn't matter with Tycho. You can do all that and then take the stress and it won't matter to him because you'll still be able to perform your actions. Uh, combining this with combining his ability with push the limit is extremely useful because then you just keep pushing the limit and Tycho won't give a damn because again, stress doesn't matter to him. Especially since he's flying an A-Wing. And if you ever want to get rid of that stress, then of course the A-Wing's got lots of green maneuvers to do so. Um, hmm. So, with his title card, I've given him the A-Wing, a test pilot. Coming in at a point cost of zero, it reads, your upgrade bar gains one elite upgrade icon. You cannot equip two of the same elite upgrade cards, and you cannot equip this card if your pilot skill value is one or lower. So, that means Tycho is now able to have two different elite upgrade cards. So this, this is similar to the uh, Rolgar TIE modification, Rolgar TIE title to the TIE Interceptors. But instead of getting two elite upgrades, they get two modifications. As long as they're different ones, it doesn't matter. So now Tycho has two different elite mo elite uh, pilots, talents, upgrade cars to use. For his modification, we give him a stealth device, which increases agility by one. But if he's hit by an attack, then he discards this card. Comes with a point cost of three, so that means Tycho's agility now sits at four, makes him making him a, making him a much harder target to hit because you have four agility at range two to one, and then five agility at range three. For his first elite pilot, uh, his first elite upgrade, we've gone with Wired, and I believe this stacks very well with uh, Tycho's ability because it reads. Let me just get this to focus, please. Come on. There we go. Comes at a point cost of one, so it's a very cheap upgrade. It reads: If you're attacking, your, when you're attacking, you're defending. If you are stressed, you may reroll one or more of your focus results. So, Wired, if you're stressed you get to reroll your focus results, whether you're attacking or defending. This pairs greatly with Tycho's ability to be able to take actions while stressed. So that means you can keep taking actions as long as you have at least one stress token on you. Tycho, you can you can still um, perform an action with um, Tycho, and then of course you have Wired here to reroll any of your focus results. So this kind of makes up for not being able to take a focus result. And then of course we have, for his second elite pilot skill, I've gone with the Duke. It's a small ship only upgrade. It comes at a score point cost of two. Came with the Thai FO, uh, one of the uh, one of my Thai FO um, uh, expansions, and it reads: Come on. When attacking, if you have an evade token, you may change one of the defender's evade results to a focus result. So, Juke behaves similarly to uh, advanced sensors, but only it, it applies when you're attacking instead. So, advanced sensors, if you're defending, you can change one of the defender's uh, hit result, defender's hit uh, attacker's hit results to a focus result, and they can't reroll that result. But with Juke, if you're attacking, you can change one of the defender's evade results to a focus result, 
but they can modify that with a focus. It's, it doesn't state that they can't or cannot modify it, so I'm going to, I'm going to assume that they can modify it with evade, result, evade tokens. So make sure when you're using this that they don't have any focus tokens or whatever to, um, to um, um, remodify that result. Or better yet, wait wait until after they spend after they spend their um, after they spend their focus results to um, change it back to a focus and increase your chances of hitting them. And then of course for his missile upgrade, I've gone with a shard and refit, which is pretty much um, a must for all A-wing fighters. He has a negative squadron has a negative squadron point cost of two, so that means in exchange for not getting a missile slot or exchange it for using up your missile slot, you um, you now have your A-wing now costs two points less than it would have. Which is great. Now I move on to the uh, the other heavier ship here. We have Elo Asti coming in at a pilot skill of seven. He flies the Incom T seventy X wing fighter for the resistance. He has the standard stats of a T seventy. He has an attack value of three, an agility value of two, a hull value of three, and a shield value of three. His action bar consists of the focus, target lock, and boost actions. He costs thirty squadron points to field, and his upgrade bar consists of an elite upgrade, a warhead upgrade, an astromech upgrade, and an attack upgrade. His pilot ability reads, while you are not stressed, you may treat your, your uh, um, talent roll maneuvers as white maneuvers. So basically, Elo Asti, you can treat your talent rolls as white maneuvers, not get stressed, and that allow you to perform your actions. So basically, Elo Asti is kind of overpowered in that sense, because with Elo, let's just do an example here, you can do a talent roll, it will be treated as a white maneuver, and that will allow you to either do a boost, target lock, a booster, a target lock, or a, a boost, target lock, or a focus. So really, the only K the only red maneuver if you use this ability, really the only red maneuver Allo Asti will have is the K turn four. And then of course, with his modification, I've given him an integrated astromech, which is kind of like a must for X wings these days. Uh, it's an X wing with a modification with a call with a squadron point cost of zero. Come on, focus, please. Come on. I'm having this again, hey. Uh, but it reads. When you are dealt a damage card, you may discard one of your astromechal upgrade cards to discard th that damage card without resolving its effect. So, be it a hit or a critical, if your ship is about to be destroyed, you can sub out your astromech to negate that damage entirely, allowing you to stay in the fight. So, it, 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 it takes away your astromech, yes, but in the long run, would you rather lose the astromech or lose the ship and the astromech? I think the answer is pretty obvious. And for a, co a squadron point cost of zero, I say that's a pretty, uh, that's a pretty good uh, exchange if you ask me. Especially if you feel a very, very cheap, a very, very cheap and expendable astromech. For his elite pilot skill, I have gone with Daredevil. It is, um, it uh, it is a um, uh, an elite pilot, a talent that must be used during the action phase. Come on, focus, please. Why are you doing this? Come on. There we go. Comes with a squadron point cost of three, and it reads, action, execute a white hard left one or hard white one maneuver, then receive a stress token. Then if you do not have the boost action icon, roll two attack dice. Suffer any damage or critical damage rolled. So Daredevil, uh, I find goes perfectly with Elo Asti because you do your K you do your Talon roll, and then you can do Daredevil to flip your ship a full 270 degrees. Um while going in a wide arc. So it's good for evading and circling around and getting behind your and getting into a uh, position to fire back at your opponent. Of course, you will receive a stress for it, but that's fine because we'll get to that in a second. For his uh, warheads, I've gone with plasma torpedoes that come in at a squad point cost of three, can be used at range two to three and have an attack value of four. It reads, spend your target lock and discard this card to form this attack. If this attack hits, after dealing damage, remove one shield token from the defender. So plasma torpedoes are shield whittlers. Uh, they have the same stats as a proton torpedo, uh, one point costs one point less, and they um, they basically would away at shield. So even if this attack only has one hit value, uh, the the the, um, the defender loses one shield point regardless. So they'll lose the one, and then they'll lose the second one after that. So, and then of course we come to the next one here. We have there's astromech. We go with an R2 astromech which comes in at a squadron point cost of one and reads, you may treat all one and two speed maneuvers as green maneuvers. So, uh, it's a very cheap and very expendable astromech. And it pretty much uh, gives Elo Asti nine green maneuvers to work with. So that means 
you can daredevil and then you can do like a, a speed to a speed um uh, a, 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 a speed um a hard turn two to circle around and get behind your opponent again it'll count as a green maneuver remove the stress and then you can do like your target lock focus or bear, target lock focus or boost or whatever or even you can do another daredevil if you want to um but it'll free, basically the idea is it'll free up for another talent another white talent roll and then uh, combo that into a daredevil or something and then for his tech upgrade i've gone with the weapons guidance system has a squadron point cost of two come on mm, there we go states when attacking you may spend a focus token to change one of your blank results to hit results so if you have two hits in a blank and you have a focus token you can change spend that focus change it from change that one blank to a hit so it kind of helps in uh, with accuracy. But other than that, it's just, I mean, it's it's, it's a very situational upgrade. Um, to be, uh, you have to know when to use it. Similar to Daredevil and all that, all the other stuff. Move on to the older model ship here. We have a ship that is a pilot that has increased to becoming one of my favorites. That is Derek Hobby Clidian of Rogue Squadron. Coming in at a uh, pilot skill of five, he flies the Incom T sixty five X wing for the Rebel Alliance. He has the standard stats of an X-Wing, attack value 3, agility value 2, hull value 3, shield value 2. His action bar consists of the focus and target lock actions. He costs 25 points to field. His upgrade bar consists of a warhead upgrade, an astromech upgrade, and an unlisted title and modification. His pilot ability reads, when you acquire or spend a target lock, you may remove one stress token from your ship. So see how, see how this works? He doesn't care about stress. You can easily remove stress with the R2 astromech. And of course, you have like less red maneuvers to worry about. And then as long as he keeps getting target locks or spending them, then his stress is gone. That's the idea here. So, yeah. All these ships are able to cope with stress much better than most other ships. And let's see here. For uh, his odd modification, I've also given him integrated astromech, which will sub out his astromech for uh, a free hull or for a, for a free evasion for uh, any hits he takes. So if he's about to be destroyed, sub out your astromech and you'll negate that damage entirely. Basically a free hull upgrade for X-Wings. His warheads consist of proton torpedoes, which come in at a squad point cost of four. They have an attack value of uh, four, and you can use it at range two to three. It reads, spend your target lock and discard this card to perform this attack. You may change one of your focus results to a critical. So, pretty straightforward. You roll your four dice, you spend, you spend your target lock, roll your four dice, and if, if you have one focus result, you can change it to a critical. And then, of course, tell him with his red maneuver and give him with a targeting astromech. Uh, targeting astromech... Has a squadron point cost of two, and it reads: After you execute a red maneuver, you may acquire a target lock. So the beauty behind this is, basically, Hobby Clivian's K turn becomes a white K turn because you take your maneuver, get stress, targeting astromech, get you a target lock, target lock from Hobby's ability, remove the stress, allows you to take your second focus action, helps with your protons and any of, and and your primary weapons as well. So, yeah. So basically, he gets white talent rolls, and he gets a white K turn. So basically, with this setup, Hobby, Hobby has no red maneuvers. You can pretty much go nuts with this maneuver dial, and you have no consequence. So yeah, this is um, I I originally called this my stress schmesh build because really stress is no consequence to these guys. Um, but yeah, yeah, I guess it's a good name, stress schmesh. Who cares? Who cares about stress? Um, but anyway, that's how the uh, this is how the build operates. I will, or this is how the build is constructed. I'll show you in a bit how the build works. Okay, the scenario was in place. We have our ships all lined up, ready to make their maneuvers. Uh, for this scenario, we're using um, a VT-49 Decimator pilot by Captain Rikun. He's already made his maneuver, and he has taken a focus action. Just put one right in front of me right there. So he's taking a focus action for this, because he knows he's going to be taking a lot of damage after this. Uh, we're going to start with uh, Hobby Clivian, because he is the next pilot skill up. His maneuver is going to be a K-4. So how this will work is he makes his maneuver. Sorry for the shadow. That's just me. He's going to make his K4. Like that. It's going to get stressed. But, targeting Astromech allows him to take a free target lock. So we're going to give him a target lock. Onto Waikun. Well, Hobby's ability, because he's acquired a target lock, removes the stress. And he can now take his focus action. Action economy for the win. Next, we have Elo Asti coming in at a pilot skill of 7. He goes next. His maneuver is going to be a Talon roll at speed 3, because that's the only speed he can do the Talon rolls. So he's going to be doing a Talon roll going this way. Like 
that. And his ability allows him to treat that as a white maneuver, so he will. And he already has a target lock on OP. And then for this scenario, he's going to use Daredevil to turn around a complete 270 degrees. So for this, he will get stressed, but look where he is now. He's now at range one of... He once started at unable to fire, and now he is at, now he is at range one. He's at range one of um, Hoikun here, and he is able to uh, fire his... Um, um, oh no, he can't fire his um, plasmas, never mind. Well, he'll still be able to uh, get a um, four attack dice from this result. Now it's come. Now it's um, um, Tycho's turn. He's going to do a K5. Now I'm just going to check and see if he'll make this. Sorry, guys. Just going to. Oh, yeah, he'll make that. He probably could have made that with a K3, too. So we're just going to do this real. We're just going to do that. There we go. And. And he makes it right next to Ello. Hello. <laughs> really funny name for a guy, I must admit, for our character, I must admit. So yeah, he did bump. He just made it just there. Now, let's move these uh, shield tokens over here. He gets stressed. But that's fine. Tycho can still take actions because he's Tycho. For his action, he's going to take an evade. Like so. All right, now we move to the firing stage. Uh, Taiko will get the first shot. He's shooting at range one, and he has a stress and innovate token. So how this will work is, um, let me get my dice. We're gonna get three dice against, well, zero, but I guess I'll defeat the bridge. But here, save this scenario, he rolls his dice. Okay, hit him two focuses. Because Taiko is stressed, he can use wire to reroll these focus results. And didn't really do him much. But it doesn't matter because he would still take a hit. So we're going to take a shield off him. Now, if, say for example, this was um, like one of the guys who can, if he was given, like, say, um, allowed to overroll one dice, if this is a range three attack, if he hadn't evade, Tycho can use Juke to change that to a focus and land his shot. But that's not the case right now. Next, we go into Elo Asti. He's a range one, so he's gonna fire his standard weapon because he cannot fire his um his um his plasma his plasma torpedoes. And oh look at that. We have two hits and two criticals. So that's all he's gone. And his critical is direct hit. He's now sitting at I think he has 12 hull and four shields, so. He's not sitting at 10 hull. He's not sitting at 10 hull because of direct hit. Now, it is Hobby's turn to attack. Hobby is going to spend his target lock to fire his proton torpedoes. Now, if he were stressed again, he spent his target lock, that would remove the stress. But because he moved the stress beforehand with his targeting astromech, no biggie. So, here we go. Spent his target lock, fire with proton torpedoes. Okay, so he has two hits, a focus, and a blank. Uh, torpedoes allow him to change one focus result to a critical. And, of course, Oiken can attack, so he suffers both these hits. And then a critical, which is major hull breach. So, basically what happens is, um, at the, after the, um, starting the next round, after, at, starting the round after he gets this, all, um, all um, damage cards he's dealt for critical hits. In his action, though, he can flip the face down. And, of course, it'll be Oikun's turn to attack. He'll attack, say, Eloasti, because it'll be a 4v2. So, get the dice ready. So, he's got a focus. He'll spend that. Turn all four of those, so it'll be three hits and a critical. And Elo has one evade, so that means he loses all three of his shields. Blah. That's fine. So that's how the scenario works. Um, these guys can make rip. These guys, these guys can make one. This guy can make K turns up the wazoo thanks to his hardening astromech. As long as he has that one stress token on him, that's fine. Tycoon can still take an action. Uh, the stress will allow him. To, the stress will kind of somewhat compensate for his lack of focus tokens because he'll be able to reroll his focus results because of juke or wired. 
and then juke as long as he keeps that evade uh, as long as he keeps taking evade results then he'll keep he can, he's able to keep juking his opponents out Ilo asti he has a lot of he's a lot of beam moves you read that stress thanks to the archer astromech and then once that stress is gone he can do another k turn he can do a tire lock and then do another uh, talon roll into a daredevil to get into a to maneuver around the opponent and so on and so forth so yeah, this is how my Stress Smash works uh, build uh, squadron works. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Any sort of criticism is greatly appreciated. If you like, you may use this squadron for any competitive or casual play. Or you may tweak it or revamp it to your own specifications. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Corbin22, signing off.